Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Second St. John Church telecast. And we're about to go into our home daily Bible readings. It is good to see you today. And you may not have joined us ever in the past. Uh, quite often we come on throughout the week and we do the home daily Bible readings from our Sunday school book or from the Sunday school publishing board that's printed in the back of your Sunday School book lesson for the current week. And today we're on uh, Friday's Home Daily Bible Reading, which comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 through 25. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 through 25 is going to be our study for today. It is a blessing, I know, to be alive today. We thank God for this opportunity to come and dwell in his word for just a few moments. And we're gonna to try to shorten these up as much as possible. And then we'll do another telecast where you can open up and make your comments and do your discussion. 
Uh, we thank God for you. Please interact with us, uh, especially when we do the next uh, telecast where we'll talk about what we did and your comments will show up on the front of the screen. Uh, please, you feel free to make your comments even at this time. It's also a great time to make your comments and put them there and I'll do my best to answer some of your questions. Uh, the unit uh, for this month has been dealing with the call of women. That's right, the call of women. And so uh, women are very important in the ministry and we are happen to be talking about this week hospitality, hospitality. But today we're going to be talking about a topic called Christ, God's power and wisdom. Christ, God's power and wisdom. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for you sitting high, you looking low. We thank you for being Jehovah Jireh, our provider, Jehovah Tzitkanu, our righteousness. We thank you, Lord God, for being our savior, our refuge, Lord, for being our protection, for being our shield and buckler, for being the horse pouring in the valley. We thank you, O oh God, that you are protecting us, that, that you are healing us, that you are delivering us. We thank you for being our high priest. Lord, we thank you for your son that died on the cross, giving us a right to eternal life. Lord, we ask you to forgive us as we forgive those that have sinned against us. We petition your throne of grace, O oh God. Heavenly Father, we ask you, O oh God, to bind COVID-19 from us, give it no place in our mind, no place in our body, no place in our soul, no place in our spirit, no place in our surroundings, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We loose your spirit of love, peace, joy, thanksgiving, love and kindness, mercy, grace, and healing in Jesus' name. By Jesus' stripes, we were healed. We thank you today, O oh God. We pray that you will strengthen uh, the Hodges family, Apostle Hodges family, Lord. We pray that you would strengthen them, O oh God, today, on this day, O oh God, as they celebrate the home going of Apostle Lillian B. Hodges. Lord, we thank you for her, and we thank you for the ministry that you have placed in her hands, O oh God. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to work throughout this land and country. And now bless our leaders, Lord. Bless those who have authority over us, O oh God. Bless those who are in charge, O oh God. Bless those, O oh God, that they may have wisdom and knowledge in order to do your work, O oh God. We pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to lead, teach, and guide us, Lord. Thank you. Mm. Thank you for everything you've done and continue to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, let's get right into our discussion again. Thank God for you. I'm not watching my phone, so I don't see your comments at this time. But let us get right into the word of God. Let us go right to our scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 through 25, and this is going to be a familiar passage, and we're going to want right to the King James Version of the Bible. King James Version of the Bible, you can see it right here on your screen. Uh, I have the scriptures highlighted in uh, yellow so that you may follow along with us. So at this time, as we go to these scriptures, uh, I want you to look right on with us. It says, for the preaching Verse 18, that is, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Have not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. May God add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Uh, that is our scripture uh, lesson uh, for today, 
and it is from the King James Version of the Bible, and we're talking about Christ, God's power and wisdom. Isn't, it, isn't that something? And we got a, a great subject today, Christ, God's power and wisdom. And we got some words here that, that mean so much to us because there are so many in our circles who believe that what we believe in in church and what we are so glad about in the church is foolishness. And it is, it is the power of God uh, that reigns and runs through our veins. Uh, we're going to look at this one more time in the Message Bible, and then we're going to open up our discussion about our home daily Bible reading about Christ, God's power, and wisdom. Uh, let's go right over to the Message Bible. We're trying to be in short today, so hang in here with us. The Message Bible, I have it highlighted in green. You'll see it in just a moment as I go back up to the top of the scripture. Okay, we're going to start around verse 18, and this is the Message Bible. I've told you uh, repeatedly, I advised you to get you some different versions of the scripture. The Message Bible talks more like we speak in today's time. Uh, you can also get a new international version of the Bible. I choose to read uh, the Message Bible in contemporary language. Okay, and you can find that at any of your local bookstores. It's relatively uh, available, plentifully available for your purchase. All right, verse number uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 through uh, 25. And we just read it in the King James Version of the Bible. Now we're finna read it in the Message Bible uh, Version. And I'm gonna read aloud, and then we're gonna go back and pick up our points. The message that points to Christ on the cross seems like sheer silliness to those hell-bent on destruction. But for those on the way of salvation, it makes perfect sense. This is the way God works, and most powerfully as it turns out. It is written, I'll turn conventional wisdom on its head. I'll expose so-called experts as crackpots. So where can you find someone truly wise, truly educated, truly intelligent, in this day and age. Hasn't God exposed it all as pretentious nonsense? Since the world in all its fancy wisdom never had a clue when it came to knowing God. God in his wisdom took delight in using what the world considered dumb preaching. Of all things, to bring those who trust in him into the way of salvation. While Jews clamor for miraculous demonstrations and Greeks go into their philosophical wisdom, we go right on pro proclaiming Christ, the crucified. Jews treat this like an anti-miracle and Greeks pass it off as absurd. But to us who are personally called by God himself, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is God's ultimate miracle and wisdom all wrapped up in one. Human wisdom is so tiny, so impotent, next to the seeming absurdity of God. Human strength can't begin to compete with God's weakness. Oh, may God add a blessing again to the reading of his word. And we've read it in two different versions of the Bible. We've read it in two different versions of the Bible uh, talking about Christ, God's power and wisdom. Christ, God's power and wisdom. And we know that the word Christ and the word Messiah are the same. The word Christ and Messiah are the same. And you can add one more to that category, the word Savior. 
He is the savior of the world. We're talking about Jesus, the Christ, Jesus, the Messiah, Jesus, the savior. He is the power of the good news to those who are saved. Now, this particular passage of scripture uh, tends to tell us about what the world thought about uh, this gospel. And a lot of times we get caught up in worldly wisdom. And a lot of, you'd be surprised, a lot of church people are even caught up about what the world has to say about salvation and about spirituality. And it's not about what the world has to say. It was clear in our passage today that 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 uh, what the world is seeking after uh, it was not God at all. So if you're looking for the world to validate God, uh, I pray that you will not be disappointed. Uh, for the thing that that people are calling foolish, and uh, they're calling absurd or weak, for you to uh, listen to the gospel being preached, uh, you'd be surprised that they don't even value salvation. But to those who are saved, the power of the gospel is Jesus crucified. Oh, I, I, you heard what I said, crucified, because that is the power unto salvation. That is the way of salvation. That is the ultimate sacrifice was made for us that we might be saved. So the world might think it's stupid. They might think it's absurd. Uh, I've known a lot of people, especially when you're talking about the black church and in and, and one particular, the black Baptist church, you're talking about people saying it don't take all of that. And I'm not interested in the preaching of the gospel. But as they live on and their soul, uh, or, or their soul desires and, and those uh, things come into their body that, that, that urges them to accept the Lord and Savior, they're seeking something that they have voidness in their spirit and in their body. And their, 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 their spirit is just pulling at the word of God, and they don't know why or how it fills those valleys. It fills those voids in their body, in their life. It's the power of the gospel. It's a pool. It, it places a desire in you. It's kind of like being hungry, and you, you, you know, you didn't get up and study how to be hungry. <laughs> those things are uh, inherent in you, the hunger to eat, the hunger uh, for food, and the spiritual hunger for God is placed inside of you. Wow, <laughs> that's power, that's powerful. That, but you didn't hear what I said. I said, the hunger for God is placed in, God starts out the relationship. He places a desire on the inside of you to get saved. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah places of desire in you. Let's look more particular at our scripture. And I'm going to use the King James as our backdrop as we continue our short discussion. Let's go right back over there. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Let's get right back in here. Let's get right back in here. I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind. Let me get back up here to the top. Verse 18. Verse 18. For the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolishness. The person that's unsaved, the preaching of the gospel is foolishness. It's foolishness. When you talk about Jesus gave his life, they go, well, he had to give his life and you think you're going to live? It's foolishness to, to the person that's unsaved when you start talking about God's way of doing things and what God did, what Jesus did for us in order for us to be saved. It's foolishness to them. They have worldly wisdom. It's foolishness to them. The Bible is spiritually discerned. To those who are outside, it does not make sense. But when God puts that desire and urge in you, he starts to unwrap and unfold his wisdom. The Bible says here in verse 19, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Look at that. And will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. God starts to let you see that the wisdom of the worldly wise is nothing compared to the wisdom of God. You can be full of world wisdom and you will see that it will let you down, it will fail. Only what God says will last. Where is the wise? That's what verse 20 says. Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Have not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, 
look look at it. For after that, look at this, look at these scriptures. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. All of that wisdom that we said, all that science, all that going to Mars, Jupiter, the moon, and all that, we were not seeking God. God, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So the world's wisdom was not for you to discover God. God has to put all of that foolishness in his proper place that he may have the dominion. Yeah, yeah. And look at what God does. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. It pleased God. And no matter what you say, God's way does not have to make sense to you and I. God's way of doing things. It pleased God to use preaching as one of the ways to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, talking about miraculous sign. The Jews want to see some kind of a miraculous sign. Show me something. Show me something that I can't do. Show me something that 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 that, that, that uh, defies uh, uh, common sense. Uh, they they seeking after a sign, and the Greeks they want some philosophical uh, 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 display, and uh, that's that's all foolish. You're looking for the wrong thing. They're looking for the wrong thing. He, he says uh, Christ crucified is like a stumbling block. We preach Christ crucified. We preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews, that's a stumbling block. That's a stumbling block. That's a stumbling block uh, to the Jews. That is a stumbling block. block. Well, uh, that is a stumbling block to, to the Jews uh, talking about, uh, yeah, yeah. Forget about deciding what's right for each other. Here's what you need to be concerned about, that you don't get in the way of someone else making life more difficult than it already is. I'm convinced, Jesus convinced me that everything as it is in itself is holy. We, of course, by the way we treat it or talk about it, can contaminate it. Uh, uh, you know, sometimes we can be a stumbling block uh, to others. We can be a stumbling block uh, to others. And we must always be aware of that, that we can be a stumbling block uh, to others. And I want you to know that just because we preach Christ crucified, then you say, well, well, Christ was crucified. He's dead and gone. But you forgot he got up. That through his death and through his obedience to God the Father, we might be saved. And I, I'm talking to somebody uh, today, I'm talking to somebody right now that God is available and willing to save. And no matter what the world has to say about it, uh, God makes the world's wisdom uh, seem so weak. And through the weakness, <laughs> the weakness, God's weakness is stronger than anything man has ever had. <laughs> God is so good. Thank God that Christ is God's power and wisdom. And uh, no matter what you're looking for in the world, uh, to be so smart, you know, you can be so ignorant. God is the all-knowing, all-powerful one. He sent his son, and through the works of his son, he gave us an example. He gave us an example of how we should be. And uh, Jesus, the power of the cross, the foolishness that we some people say we preach, uh, but that was the way that God decided that we should be saved. Uh, this is Pastor Chipman. He was writing to, uh, Paul was writing to the Corinthians. We've been in these epistles that Paul has written all week. And I uh, I want to tell somebody out there, you may have more degrees than a thermometer, they used to say. And I have degrees. And you may have uh, a doctorate and you may be, uh, have uh, other positions that rank you higher than than anybody else. But if you don't believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because you think it's beneath you and it's foolishness for you to follow somebody that's preaching that don't have the degrees that you have uh, or has not uh, is not in a church big enough for you and is not over enough folk for you, 
you're focusing on the wrong thing. And if you're, you're focusing on, uh, it's not enough money in that place for me to go there. That place is not good enough for me. Remember that Jesus hung, bled, and died, that we might have a right to be saved. I'm not against education. Matter of fact, I'm for education. I'm not against uh, making money. Uh, I'm for you making money and making a living. I'm not against that. But when it comes to the wisdom of this world, it's no comparison to God. God is all-knowing and all-powerful, and there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing we can do but accept him as our personal Lord and Savior. So if you're here today, no matter where you are, in your hospital room, in your quarantine area, maybe you have some other type of disease or need, maybe your marriage is broken, maybe your relationship with your children is not right, maybe you're living in a messed up relationship where you're not married but you're habitating together, I come to you and say worldly wisdom is nothing compared to God's wisdom. Seek God out. Pray. God does answer prayer. As I leave, the Bible says all have sinned and messed up and come short of the glory of God, including me. The wages of sin is death. We deserve to die because of sin. But we can accept Jesus as our personal Savior. That's a free gift. We can accept Jesus as our personal Savior. And he's able to forgive us. The Bible says, except the man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That if anybody's going to come to the Father, they have to come through Jesus. The Bible teaches us that we must confess with our mouth, believe in our heart, and thou shalt be saved. What, what can we confess with our mouth? That Jesus is Lord. Yes, we can confess that with our mouth. That Jesus is Lord. And he will forgive us of our sins. He's that kind of a God. And he's available today. Call me. I want to witness your salvation. I want to witness you giving your life to Christ. You say, well, pastor, is that necessary? Well, you should not be ashamed. For the Lord Jesus said, if you be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. You should be willing to, to confess with your mouth that, pastor, uh, reverend, I believe that Jesus died and rose again. And I'm accepting him as my personal Savior. If you're out there, just make, pick up the phone and make the call right now. Quit being devil-shamed. Quit being world-shamed because the world's wisdom cannot save you. It's God's wisdom. It's God's way. Thank God for you today for listening to a Home Daily Bible reading. Christ, power, and wisdom. Christ, God's power, and wisdom. For my Sunday School Publishing Board, Sunday School Book, Home Daily Bible Reading for Friday evening, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 through 25. This has been Pastor Stephen Chipman, and you know our slogan, just do it how God's way. God bless you, and you have a blessed day.